she would remember about Charleston when she casts a vote? Oh, absolutely, because we started off with her just talking the main points that we had before, that out of the whole Navy list, Charleston is 22% of that to total list. Now, you may want to keep in mind they do read all the letters if you've sent any letters up here, but really what it comes down to is military strategic value, whether or not they'll close the base. Team Charleston trying to cover all their bases today. They met with the commissioner, really not a lot of new information they were able to convey. A lot of the same points we've been hearing before. They just want to cover all their bases leading into tomorrow's meeting. Brian Thompson spoke, uh, sort of took the Washington angle with all of this, and even spoke with the commissioner today, Brian. Indeed, Bob. Uh, Senator Hollings, however, did speak today. He talked for the first time about a dinner he had with the president and live five news learned about a last minute meeting of politics that didn't include south carolina when the commission meets tomorrow as many as 21 bases could be added to its list well i would expect they would include norfolk and portsmouth which will give them a comprehensive look see at the entire uh, Eastern Seaboard. But Live 5 News also learned today that Commission Chairman Jim Corder was making the rounds with several congressmen on the eve of tomorrow's big meeting. That was news to Hollings. You're asking me, I'm going to ask you, am I missing something? I don't know about it. So should Charleston be worried? But this process of my uh, talking to and visiting with members of Congress is one that's been going on for 35 days or 40 days and will continue after today. Nothing special on the eve of tomorrow's big meeting? No, no, nothing special at all. I'm coming with no message. I'm coming because they requested to see me and uh, nothing should be gleaned from it. So Corder met with these Florida congressmen and community leaders who, by the way, are urging that the Marine Air Station at Beaufort be put on the list. Hollings, by the way, for the first time, talked of his dinner with the president the same night the Base Closure Commission met for the first time. That night, Base Closure did not come up. With it, and I thought it was premature when he hadn't seen it, studied it, and hadn't gotten a report from the commission itself to start talking about it. We had some other things. To talk Maybe they didn't talk about Base Closure at that dinner, but wouldn't you have loved to have been a bug on the wall at that dinner meeting with Hollings and the president of the United States? Back to you, Bill, Debbie. Thanks, Brian. We appreciate that. Now, we understand that uh, you at home may have some questions for these two as well. So talk back tonight to Bob Knowles or Brian Thompson. They're both live in Washington, as you just saw. Ask them anything about base closure and what the mood is like on Capitol Hill in light of tomorrow's hearings. Talk back, of course, coming up in just a few minutes later in the news hour. In other news tonight, he is a teenager accused of rape. But worse than that, he's accused of doing it while out on a murder charge. We told you about it first last night, and tonight, Leanne Register tells us although he's back in jail, officials say it could not have been prevented. Reports that we had were that he was not at home, that he had been violating that home arrest, that house arrest. Now we have information that he has committed other offenses. The other offenses allegedly took place on this street yesterday. The judge made the determination with this case that he might can minimize the risk of the community by imposing a condition of house arrest. Tell me they have seen him driving a car and being places that he's not supposed to be, but they were too afraid to talk to us today on camera. They did tell us they resent the fact that this boy accused of murder has been allowed to freely roam their neighborhood. Shawaki says house arrest cannot be monitored. That's simply a condition. It's a thing written on a piece of paper, and there's no mechanism, there's no agency which exists to enforce those conditions. Shawaki says they depend on the community calling violators in. Now, some say there is one way to make sure something like this doesn't happen again. Today, while Attorney General Travis Medlock was in town, we asked him what he thought about house arrest. You uh, can monitor the individual with a uh, with a device that they wear in in their homes and uh, if that person goes uh, 100 feet say from the telephone in that house then that sounds an alarm and the monitoring uh, station will pick up on that medlock says monitoring bracelets are used in our state right now but not a lot he says he's proposing using the idea to the general assembly but doesn't think violent offenders should be allowed out of jail on bond at all closer to home a berkeley county man holds police at bay for over two hours now his brother is saying the whole thing could have been avoided if charleston's va hospital would have listened to the man's cries for help our allison shea has their story Today, everything looked like it was back to normal in the Sunrise Mobile Home Park in Goose Creek. 
But last night, this was the scene as Berkeley County Police and a SWAT team descended on the home of a VA hospital officials told us I did call about 630 last night and talked to staffers for about a half an hour. It was after that that staffers decided that calling the police was the best thing to do. The administrative officer today does not make any clinical judgments. Um, we leave that, you know, to bring the fat for the family to bring the patient in or or um, in, as in this case, we did what we deemed appropriate to get assistance for the patient. Ivy Dean Boyd is now in the VA hospital undergoing treatment and is said to be doing better. Allison Shea, Live 5 News. Now, said he believes a lot of veterans have received rather poor treatment from our VA hospital. And to find out now if that's true, we are asking you to call us and let us know about your experiences with the hospital, good or bad. You can call us at this number, 723-8371. Ask for extension 544 again. When you call Channel 5 about your complaints or the good things that have happened to you at the VA hospital, call 723-8371 and ask for extension 544. Tonight, authorities have identified the body of a man who was found floating along the banks of Daniel Island. The body of... Junior was pulled from the Edisto River last night about 6.30. Several local rescue crews were out working on a practice rescue when they spotted a yellow hard hat. Berkeley County Coroner Wade Arnett says the autopsy determined drowned. Tonight, police are still investigating how it happened. Three teenage girls are recovering tonight from a scary car accident. The accident happened on Coleman Boulevard in front of Shim Creek about 9 o'clock last night. Police tell us the car the girls were driving crossed into the oncoming lane and hit a truck. The car flipped over and rescue crews had to cut the girls out of the car. One of the girls is... All three girls are still at MUSC tonight. We are told the driver of the truck was not badly hurt. There is no word at this time of any charges in the accident. Well, they didn't follow a trail of pills, but tonight North Charleston police have discovered where two men allegedly got some prescription drugs. Now, we told you last night how police confiscated over 4,000 pills and bottles of medicated cough syrup. If you live or work in Mount Pleasant, you're probably still having some delays getting back and forth over the Cooper River bridges. The traffic backup started yesterday as the old bridge was closed down for the filming of the movie Chasers. The traffic today was reportedly a little heavier than it was yesterday and maybe even heavier tomorrow as the tourist traffic increases. The bridge will be closing again in just a few minutes and it will be closed until 8.30 tonight. Tomorrow it will, be, it will be closed from 9 in the morning until 1 in the afternoon and again from 6.30 until 8.30 tomorrow night. Well, the star of the movie Chasers is also in one of the biggest finales in television history. Yesterday, our Marlo Burdash talked exclusively with Tom Berenger. He is said to play a key role in tonight's final episode of Cheers. Well, you know, we know that you may be watching that on a different channel, but afterwards, tune in to Live 5 News Night Watch at 11 o'clock for an exclusive inside story on how Berenger felt being part of the Cheers bar crowd. And we certainly can't complain about our weather. It's almost perfect. That's right. So Charlie will preview our upcoming weekend weather forecast. Stay with us. Battle over the Confederate flag continues in our state. This time it's not at the state capitol, however. It's at a middle school right here in the Low Country. We'll have the full story for you coming up tonight at 6.30. Fleetwood's been totally redesigned, and it's got dual airbags. But for me, the $2,000 cash back, that's what really tipped it in. I can't tell you the last time I felt so good about buying a new car. Hey, Walter, I got a truckload of tomatoes for you. They're a touch ripe, but if you miss... Yo, Walter, me again. What's the deal? These tomatoes aren't getting any younger. At Vilo, our produce is better because of Walter. You'll also find all these items at Bilo during the buy one, get one free sale. 12-inch frozen tombstone pizzas, two for $6. And whisk power scoop, two for $5. Bilo, the name fits.
looking for something a little different from your TV? Take a look at USA Network. I didn't scare you, did I? Welcome to the first edition of Gossip, Gossip, Gossip. You chase ghosts? Sometimes I catch them. Oh, hey, that means you. These are entertaining shows for the whole family. And right now, you can get USA along with dozens of great cable channels at special savings. So pick up the phone. Call now. We had a gorgeous day, and it did seem to cool off just a little bit today. If you? Mother Nature could give us these kinds of days for the weekend, Every day. everybody would be happy. Charles, is this going to last? Uh, yes, it will, in fact, and the upcoming weekend begins to look pretty good. We're going to get into the 50s tonight. You're kidding. You know, I'm no longer saying window open, because that's dangerous to leave your window open, but uh, it's, it's tempting just to crack it a little bit <laughs> and then lock it, you know? Mm -hmm. The temperatures will drop into the 50s. Oh, tonight. boy. And not many more days like that left, or nights before the heat gets here. Would you tell oh, us about right. it? Here we go. Uh, we hit 81 degrees today, and that was the temperature, whether you were at the airport or in the city. Right now we're showing 78 winds from the northwest instead of southwest for a change. Northwesterly flow brings our temperature down a few degrees from what we've been having, and it's going to get uh, even cooler in the next few days. 42% humidity, 29.71 at barometric pressure is still not up where we'd like to see it as far as any strong fair weather high uh, influencing our picture, but that can change too. Next tide is high at 714 this evening, and the view from uh, way up there begins to look like this. Uh, you still see some low, uh, dark, scattered clouds today, it's sort of a threat of rain, enough to keep some of you from believing the forecast that we wouldn't have rain, and of course we didn't have any rain, but it did look a little dreary for a while, except along the immediate coast, the beach people turned out well. The uh, rain activity was confined well back inland, up over the northeast, and some very widely scattered spotty air mass type showers up over the lakes area. And no strong system coming in, but our attention is drawn to this nice area of clear weather over the plains, and it too is going to work its way in our direction. This area of high pressure uh, is our weather maker for the next several days, and the changes for tomorrow will show this very slow moving front, slowed up considerably by the area of low pressure forming along, and that tends to counterclockwise sort of hold the front uh, close to the coast. But that's going to move tomorrow slightly and get farther off our coast. Weather then should clear. This uh, high will give us a northwesterly flow again tomorrow, and that should be a cool, drying flow. And not only tomorrow, but going on into the upcoming weekend, we see mostly uh, nice uh, weather. In fact, we're still calling for a great weekend. Friday, Saturday looked uh, absolutely great. And a little cloudiness on Sunday. That would be five-day, looks like this. And for tonight, look at this. 58 degrees tomorrow night, you're going to be saying, hey, where's the blanket? 54, and a high tomorrow of only 74, mixture of clouds and sunshine for tomorrow, but uh, no, th no threat of rain. Saturday looks great, so does Sunday, and even going into Monday, the weather looks favorable for all outdoor plans. Thank you, Charles. You did so a wonderful nice. job. Except cutting yards and raking grass. I we don't recommend no, I don't do that anyway. <laughs> Carolyn Murray is standing by in the newsroom right now to tell us what's coming up later in the news hour. Carolyn? Thanks, Debbie and Bill. I'll tell you why people against rape want their name off of a coupon booklet. The company says they have done nothing wrong. You'll hear both sides of the story in tonight's Troubleshooter Report. Now, what's coming up next in Talkback? I'm glad you asked, Carolyn. Coming up soon, tomorrow, as a matter of fact, a new base closure list is coming out. Guess who you can talk to live in Washington? Our own Bob Knowles is there with Washington reporter Brian Thompson to take your calls. You can get all the information they have in Washington, so start calling now, 723-8371. One is the number again, 723-8371, and Talk Back is up next. William Clark Lincoln Mercury has 1992 Mercury Grand Marquis. Original MSRP 21958, William Clark priced at just $275 a month. With you financing just $12,990, using your trade as cash down. William Clark has only a few of these fabulous low mileage vehicles remaining, loaded with equipment like automatic air, power windows, cruise, driver's side airbag, AM, FM, stereo, and more. You finance just $12,990 and make a payment of $275 a month. See William Clark Lincoln Mercury, two miles north of Northwoods Mall on Rivers Avenue. News flash from Burdett Chrysler Dodge. Sales increased since one price selling started. Hi folks, I'm Wayne Burdett to tell you one price shopping means you get our best deal first. It also means no haggling, no hassle. Plus your blood pressure won't go out to numbers. And that's worth more than money. So take that short drive to Monk's Corner and avoid the big city shuffle. Our prices are posted 24 hours a day. So before you buy, come to Burdett Chrysler Dodge, Highway 52 in Monk's Corner. And remember, cars are like eggs. They're cheaper in the country. How would you like to win a 93 Isuzu pup truck or a 93 Honda Accord from Stokes Honda Isuzu? Just go by the dealership on Rivers Avenue and register or send your cards to P.O. Box 186 Charleston 29402 and 
Stay tuned during the Live 5 News Hour sports segment and watch for me to call your name. If you hear your name called, you then have 15 minutes to call the number on your screen and you'll become a qualifier. Get registered and stay tuned for your chance to win. List comes out tomorrow, is scheduled to at any rate. Will that be good news for us, Pep? We're all keeping our fingers crossed. Well, it's another list, and it's been a list that I guess we've been waiting since the last list. And joining us are a couple of reporters from Washington who have kind of followed this thing uh, from a couple of different fronts. Our own Bob Knowles here has been keeping kind of a Charleston perspective on things. And Washington reporter Brian Thompson joins us. And many of you remember when he was here with us two or three weeks ago when the base closure committee. Gentlemen, welcome. We're going to go right to some phone calls here and find out what the, uh, is on the minds of the viewers tonight. We'll start first with, uh, is it Jerry, I think, from Hannah? hand go ahead you're on talk back and how you doing good uh, I've got a question for I guess Brian would be the better because uh, okay. Bob's more in Charleston uh, but Brian the uh, uh, list comes out if it has Ingleside on it uh, tomorrow uh, how do you think that that will uh, affect the Navy uh, as far as they're I mean, in the process of moving the mine warfare out of here would they stop them or would it have any effect at all Okay. I think it would put their move to a definite halt. We've gotten indications that's exactly what would happen. Apparently, Admiral Kelso has been sharing that, at least uh, with some people uh, up here on the hill. And uh, so I think you'd see a stop to that effort for now until that's all settled out. I also think if it is on the list that indeed Ingleside will be shut down and mine warfare will not move. Well, it certainly won't move there. Of course, it could always move somewhere else, but it looks like it could be saved. Mayor Riley's take on that was that the, it, the Navy being defiant is really hurting the chances of Ingleside, that the Navy, in a way, may be defying the Base Closure Commission if Ingleside is on the list. And so, as a result, it may hurt Ingleside's chances. All right, I'll go some more calls here. We'll go to Sarah from the Goose Creek area. Sarah, go ahead. Yes, um... Um, I'd like to know how we're going to fight a lot of our, a big war with a lot of our um, bases closed down. All right. Uh, yeah, the, the, go ahead, guys. It's really the, that's the heart of the issue. You've asked the right question. How will America maintain its defenses and still be able to have uh, a defense system that we can all afford? I think the Base Closure Commission and the people who are looking through this whole process know that America still needs a powerful defense. Uh, Jim Corder is certainly aware of that, and he's the one in charge of the whole process. And uh, they think that America can have a smaller defense, but still one that uh, we can afford that still does the job. And the thinking up here is that there are no more big wars. Nothing like what we planned for a war with the Soviet Union, with the communist bloc. There are none of those around anymore that could threaten us. The world has changed dramatically with the end of the Cold War, and uh, the feeling is here that we just don't need as many bases as, as we've had to fight that Cold War. Thank you, Brian Thompson and Bob Knowles joining us from Washington, and we'll have further reports as this commission tomorrow will add those 21 uh, possible new sites to the hit list. That'll do it for tonight's segment of Talk Back at the Live 5 News Hour, though, just around the corner and we'll continue right after this. It was huge and it had bats in it. Hundreds of them hanging from the walls. Oh. There's something new in Charleston. At night, the place is just crawling with swingers. Whoa! Not just a sporting goods store, but a mega store. It was incredible. A veritable cornucopia of color. A hundred thousand name brand items, incredible grand opening buys, sports town in the North Rivers Market. You'll be amazed. Carolina Camera, brought to you by Morris Nissan, where you're the boss. For the first time in history, Nissan Motors has reduced the new 93 limited edition Sentra XE automatic or five-speed two or four-door by over a thousand dollars. This reduced price makes the suggested retail price on the Sentra very low, but not low enough for Morris Nissan. At Morris Nissan, we're making history too. We're making the prices even lower. Come see how low. But you better hurry, because they're going fast. Bucky's really dealing on the new Sentra's reduced price at Morris Nissan on the Savannah Highway Auto Mile. We're going to learn about an innovative way to get around town tonight. Michael says fossil fuels could be dead. Well, you know, this is ratings month, so we're looking for a shocking story anyway. Well, this one will give everybody a charge. <laughs> we're talking about electric cars. And tonight we take Carolina Camera for a look at an idea that may send a jolt to the auto industry. 
The legacy of the internal combustion engine has always been its external discharge. And ever since they cranked them by hand, car engines have been getting bigger and more capable of blasting ears, eyes, and nostrils as they burn gasoline to create mechanical power. But those who get a charge out of cranking the horsepower under the hood may get a shock when they take a peek at this new form of acceleration. This is Santee Cooper's experimental electric vehicle, a basic pickup truck body that's had its gasoline engine lifted out and an electric-powered motor put in its place. Santee Cooper's Don Hanley explains that the 120-volt motor runs completely on power from a set of 20 batteries rigged under the hood and in the rear cab. The advantage is with the Clean Air Act that went into effect in 1992, this helps get rid of the CO2 and the NOx and everything that our vehicles are putting out. And how fast can you go? It, it has a top speed of 70 miles an hour. Instead of pulling up to the pump, you simply plug into the extension cord. For any 110 volt system, all you have to do is plug it in and it'll charge the batteries overnight. It'll take 8 to 20 hours to charge it on an overnight basis. Instead of checking oil, you need only check battery level with an hydrometer. And instead of a reserve tank, there are self-generating brakes and solar panels that will supply an additional charge as you drive. There are cells in here that react to the sun's energy, which produces electricity, which sends it down through the positive and negative connections to the DC inverter, which supplies 120 volt to the battery. Cranking it up just won't be the same if this gives way to this. So you're ready to go. And that's all you hear is what you hear right now. You kidding me? This thing is ready to drive? Yes, sir. Driving is mechanically the same as the motor runs everything an engine can. The difference is you just don't hear anything. Now, if the electric car is the wave of the 21st century, we're going to have to come up with all new terminology. I mean, instead of giving it the gas, we're powering up the amps. Instead of, gee, officer, I was driving too fast, it's, gee, I got my wires crossed. And instead of fill it up, it's, how about plug it in? Capable of driving 80 miles for less than a dollar's worth of power, the electric vehicle is a consumer's bargain. And by recharging at night could help reduce power generating costs by allowing utility companies to maintain a consistent production level 24 hours a day. Of course, this is still at the experimental stage, which is not always met with success. Then again, it may be worth keeping current with the electric vehicle. All you've got to lose is your gas tank. Now, this is not the first electric vehicle. They had them around the turn of the century. There were lots of positives and negatives, but it's an idea that didn't get off the ground. Got any more puns you want to throw out there? <laughs> Do you have to carry a long extension cord with you on those cars? Uh, no, just, just a one about 80 you. miles long. Yeah. yeah. And tonight we're brought to you by Morris Nissan. Thanks, Michael. Thanks, Michael. We'll be right back. WCSC TV, Channel 5. From your 24 hour news source. The Live 5 News Hour continues. Good evening. The fight over the Confederate flag is raging on tonight. This time, the battlefield is a middle school. Education reporter Marlo Burdash takes a look at a problem that is causing kids to choose between friendship and race. I wanted to talk to a few other students here at Oak Brook Middle School, but Principal Crump didn't think that was such a good idea since tensions are already so high between the students. He does assure me, though, that the day has gone smoothly and that there have been no fights. Crump says the school is prepared and is taking extra security precautions just to make sure there's no trouble. The kids seem ready to put this behind them as well. As soon as the school day ends, everybody is back to being friends. In Ladson, Marlo Burdash, Live 5 News. Now, Principal Crump says he has no plans to enforce a dress code. He wants to try to work with the kids to see if the problem cannot be solved by talking. In a town where tourism is big business, a warning tonight about accepting traveler's checks. This is a photocopy North Charleston Police showed us today of a counterfeit traveler's check. Detectives say three bogus AAA traveler's checks have been passed in both North Charleston and the city since Sunday. It appears that somebody has figured out a way to take the pattern from actual United States currency. They've incorporated the picture, the president's picture in the center and made up a trip, a triple A traveler's checks logo and made it appear to be a traveler's check. And these are, these appear to be photocopies. The three that we know of all appear identical. They have the same serial numbers, account numbers, everything. 
North Charleston police are warning all businesses to alert their employees. They say double check the person's ID and the check. And if you suspect anything suspicious, please call police or Crime Stoppers right away. Tonight, police have charged a North Charleston man with allegedly hitting a tourist with his car and killing him. Now, this was the scene Sunday night on Montague Avenue and Mall Drive. Letting your pet ride in the back of your truck or hang its head out of the window could soon be against the law. A proposed Beaufort County animal control law bans both of those practices. Now, many oppose the idea, but others say it protects animals from sudden stops or swerves. The proposal still has to go through a public hearing and be approved by Beaufort County Council. It's official tonight. Former U.S. Representative Tommy Hartnett has thrown his hat into the ring for governor of South Carolina. Hartnett, a native Charlestonian, says he is the only Republican who can win in 1994. He will make a formal announcement next week. Hartnett lost a bid for Congress to Democrat Senator Ernest Hollings last fall. Congressman Arthur Ravenel is another Republican considering running for governor. The USS Carr has a new commander tonight. Commander Thomas Williams IV replaces Commander Carradine Brown as USS Carr's commanding officer. Brown, who commanded the Carr since September of 1991, will head up toward Newport, Rhode Island. There, he will be going to the Naval War College. Up next, investigators get the break they wanted in a murder case. Find out when we come back. The government says no to the Savannah nuclear power plant. And investigators have discovered new evidence in a murder case. Here's tonight's follow-up five. Victims of incest may no longer have to wait before they sue their attacker. A new bill proposed before the state house would allow the victim to sue within four years of discovering the injury. Currently, a victim has to wait until he or she reaches the age of 28. Future cleanup jobs at the Savannah River nuclear site could be in jeopardy due to budget cutbacks. The State Department of Energy says that current agreements, such as the one with the Savannah River site, could be too much for the department to handle. Energy industry watchdogs were not surprised by the announcement. And that's tonight's follow-up file. Yeah, kind of a cloudy day here in the low country. Charlie will be up next to give us a peek at our weekend forecast. Are you pretty sure of that? Mm -hmm. Okay, and later in the news hour, we'll show you one coupon book that's causing a lot of headaches. This time of year, we know it takes big savings to get you out of the yard and into our stores. And that's exactly what you'll find this weekend at S&K. Choose year-round wool blend suits, two for $199.90. Pick up cotton blend long sleeve dress shirts by Wellesley, two for just $25. Plus, short sleeve solid knit piquet shirts and short sleeve flat sport shirts are two for only $25. It's a great sale, and it sure beats yard work. Shop S&K at North Rivers Market and Quadrangle Shopping Center across from Citadel Mall. We've leaped from the skies, flown to great heights, jumped over the edge to tell you about the excitement of Pontiac Grand Am. But wait, sometimes numbers speak louder than words. Pontiac Grand Am, as low as 12, 829, with the features you want. Air conditioning, ABS brakes, power steering, AM, FM stereo. A great selection of 93 Grand Ams, as low as 12, 829. Now, at your daring man of Pontiac dealers, Homestead, Charleston, Brunson, Hampton, Bilton, St. George, McElveen, Somerville. Rip it. Rip it. Rip it? We're tearing up the competition during sticker ripping days at your Carolina Chevy Geo dealers. I ripped the sticker on a new Chevy Lumina. With $1,000 cash back and my good credit, I put no money down. Rip it. Rip it. Rip it. My Cavalier with standard analog brakes is only $84.95, and I still rip the sticker for an even better deal. See your Carolina Chevy Geo dealer now during sticker ripping days because it all ends soon. Rip it. Tonight we have some exciting news to tell you about. This is one of those odd G stories. You've been, you've, you've seen her fighting to save our naval facilities, right? But tonight, Sis and Abnett, the president of the Trident Chamber of Commerce, tells us in this exclusive interview why she's so happy Good these reason. days. That's right. I'm engaged, and I'm very, very excited about that. And it's kind of interesting who you're engaged to. Yes, he's captain of a Trident submarine located in Kings Bay. <laughs> But he's been very supportive of my effort and very pleased about what we're doing because he thinks Charleston's a good Navy town. 
Oh, gee, we wish the uh, the new couple all the best, huh? We hope that they get to stay in Charleston someday. Instead right? of going down to Kings right. Bay, and don't take anything down there with you to Kings Bay. And by we the way. wish them the best. Yes, we do. Let's find out about the weather. Should we wish him the best too? Yeah. We wish you the best. <laughs> well, I've heard of people being dedicated to their uh, to their job. That's really going all for it. She's going to have to learn to salute. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, we hope she's successful. <laughs> and you're going to like the weather, so stay with me. Yes, sir. Here we go. 81 today, and uh, down to 76 right now. Tonight we're dropping down very near the 50s for the next couple of nights. So very cool, pleasant evenings are on the way. Northwesterly winds at 7, a change from the warm southwest flow of all the week long. 42% humidity, 29.71, the barometric pressure. We'd like to see that a little higher, but uh, that can change for tomorrow. Next tide high at 7.14 this evening. All right, at noon today, looking around, uh, not really expecting to find any rain, and we didn't. Not, no rain over land. Uh, some showers out toward the warm Gulf Stream waters. And as we jump to uh, 6 o'clock, still some showers out over the ocean, and some back over the northwestern part of the country. These are just body little air mass showers. They're not connected with any rain system, uh, nor is uh, any rain system really on the way. Instead, uh, we uh, look at the overall picture, and we our attention is immediately drawn here with the weekend coming up to this large area of clear weather over the plains and it's under the influence of a ridge of fair weather high pressure which will slowly work its way our direction this uh Cold front, the very weak cold front will finally slip on off the coast a little more for tomorrow here are the changes by this time tomorrow that front inches its way off the coast and our weather will clear somewhat uh, more uh, sunshine and clouds for tomorrow and then this area of high pressure is in a good position to slowly slide over for Saturday and Sunday, bring us a nice weekend. So we are expecting, uh, optimistically, a very nice weekend for your outdoor plans. Temperatures are going to be on the cool side. And, and if you live up north, look at this. These are lows tonight in the 40s throughout this entire area here. Uh, 50s, even down into the Carolinas and southern Georgia for tonight's lows and for tomorrow. Uh, we'll settle for the uh, uh, 70s once again and sail those sizzling 80s. The five-day forecast after this from McElveen. Okay, here's where we see it now. A few clouds around tonight, but temperatures drop down to 58 degrees, 54 for tomorrow, and after going only to a high of 78 degrees, a few degrees cooler than today. Uh, morning uh, clouds, afternoon sunshine for tomorrow turns into a nice day. Look at Saturday, look at Sunday, and even into Monday, the weather looks very good for the next several days. Debbie? It does look good. Thanks, Charlie. The controversy surrounding a coupon booklet continues tonight. It sure does, but our troubleshooter, Carolyn Murray, takes a look into the problem. Carol? That's right. One side says that it's a personal vendetta. Right. The other side says they're simply trying to save their reputation. And tonight, both sides are holding their ground.